Here we are with the scapula, and you can imagine the scapula is also aptly and affectionately called the shoulder blade. And so this shoulder blade, or it looks seriously like a blade because of course it's very flat and uh, it's on your shoulder and that's why they call it the shoulder blade, uh, is a wonderful portion of the pectoral girdle. It allows us to have a lot greater movement. And so here we are with just trying to describe some of the structures and the markings, but we always start off, as always, with laterality, which side is which, and let's take a look at some of the structures that will help us to determine that. First and foremost, the biggest marking is something that you would want to grab a hold of, and this little guy is called the spine of the scapula, so the largest one that's always on the posterior side. You would hate if all of a sudden this was on the anterior side, and then this would nicely smooth go up and down your ribcage. But if you turn this on the posterior side, uh, you could imagine, or anterior side, this is facing, if your face is over here, you can imagine your ribcage would be here, and then ouch, 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 every single time you raise your shoulders up, so the spine is always posterior, okay? So this is always posterior, and that gives you the first dimension. So the other dimension is this, that once you see the spine, it starts flaring this larger portion called the acromion and the acromion is always lateral this is always towards your shoulder and you can imagine this is the tips of your shoulder acromial means tips of your shoulders and so here we are with the acromion being noun that is this flare paddle like structure uh, being lateral so if we got posterior and lateral now we just need to figure out what's superior and what's always superior what's nice is this little big hawk like beak structure called the coracoid process so this coracoid process is always on the superior end, as well as this little notch, if you have one of these, this is the uh, scapular notch. So this guy right here, coracoid process is superior. So if I were to put it on my body, or you, or if say for instance it's, it's you, it would go like this on the left hand side. So this would be left, if you're, if you're laying and this is the, your nose, this would lay like this. So this would be a left scapula. All right, let's take a look at this, some of the other structures. So far we got chromion, coracoid process, scapular notch, and the spine. Well, what you'll find is that we get this nice little fossa here that almost looks like a thumbprint. And this thumbprint is what we call the glenoid fossa. And the glenoid fossa is where your shoulder is going to be. Above it, of course, is this little bump called the supraglenoid tubercle. Below it is the infraglenoid tubercle. And we're going to find this over and over again, things that constantly remind us of direction. And so if I also take a look, we have the spine. And above the spine is this shallow depression or groove. We call this the supra spinous fossa and below it is called the infraspinous fossa and if I were to go below uh, below the fossa or the scapula you would find this what we call the infra uh, sorry the sub scapular fossa so sub as if you're going into the sub basement there so sub scapular fossa is the shell the whole thing the shallow depression or groove supraspinous fossa infraspinous fossa glenoid fossa plenty of fossas here and then of course that little notch where a nerve is going to go, called the suprascapular notch, racing over that. Lastly, once you get all these directions down, it helps because then you get what we call the superior angle. This little tip here, and then the inferior angle down here, and then of course the medial border, and the lateral border, and the superior border. And those are major structures that we will be encountering with the scapula. So let's review. Spine of the scapula flares out into the chromion of the scapula. The chromion, as well as the cora coid process has some fossas, glenoid fossa, supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa, subscapular fossa, with the scapular notch at the top. Glenoid fossa has the supraglenoid tubercle at the top, infraglenoid tubercle at the bottom, and now if I'm looking this way, medial border, lateral border, superior border with the superior angle and the inferior angle being the tips.